time on Senior Murray, early 80s. I have some scriptures here to read to you today from the Gospel of St. Matthew in chapter 23, verses 8 to 10. These are the words of Jesus Christ in his ministry on earth and what he says about calling a man on earth your father. And Jesus says these words, Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 23, 8 to 10. But be ye not called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father, which is in heaven. God, Elohim, the Lord, he is the one that we call father. In the Gospel of St. Matthew, in chapter 6, verses 7 to 8, where Jesus Christ is introducing the Lord's Prayer, Jesus has the following to say about long-winded repetitious prayers, such as the Rosary. And Jesus Christ says this, But when you pray, use not vain repetitions, as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be ye not therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things you have need of before you ask them. Amen. These are the words of Jesus Christ, folks. And in St. Paul's first letter to Timothy, he says this in chapter 2, in verses 3 to 6. This is St. Paul saying this. He says, For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Saviour, who will have all men to be saved, and to come unto the knowledge of truth. For there is one God, and listen to this bit, folks. St. Paul says this in his letter to Timothy. He says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and man. Amen. The man Jesus Christ. Amen. Folks, there is only one mediator according to St. Paul. That's right. Mary is not a mediator for us between Amen. God and man. Only Jesus Christ can perform that role. Also, according to St. Paul, also in his first letter to Timothy, later on in chapter 4, St. Paul declares this. In verses 1 to 5 in chapter 4, now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter days some, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their consciences seared with a hot iron. Listen to this bit, folks. It's about the Catholic clergy. Listen to what St. Paul says. Forbidding to marry. And this is what he says about Lent and the practice of giving up meat on Fridays. St. Paul says, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving, of them which believe and know the truth, the truth of the gospel which can be found in the Holy Scriptures which God has given us to read so that we may be fully equipped, fully furnished unto all good works. In fact, in St. Paul's second letter to Timothy, in chapter 3, verses 15 to 17, he says this about the inspiration of Scripture and about the purpose of the Holy Scriptures that we have, the Word of God in the Holy Bible. St. Paul says this to Timothy, who he was raising in the Christian faith. He says, and that from a child, he's talking to Timothy here, and from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. Timothy was learned in the Holy Scriptures. He learned them from an early age. Which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Jesus Christ. It is by faith that we are saved, not of works, folks, lest any man should boast. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Folks, this is what St. Paul was saying to Timothy. 
in his second letter, talking about the inspiration of Scripture. We do not need another man to interpret the Holy Scriptures for us. The Holy Ghost himself will come to us and remind us of all things that Jesus said as we read the Scriptures. Amen. The Holy Scriptures are inspired by God, given to you that you may read them of your own accord. In fact, St. Paul even says that you should read the Scriptures. That you should read the Scriptures to show yourself approved unto God. That's what St. Paul says. Now he also says, another letter from St. Paul to Romans, to the Romans, in chapter 3, verses 27 to 28, this is what St. Paul says about works of the law and salvation. Contrary to what the Catholic Church teaches about, about participating in earning your salvation, you cannot do such a thing. St. Paul says this, Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law? Of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Also, Paul expands upon this. St. Paul expands upon this in his letter to the Galatians. In chapter 2 of St. Paul's letter to the Galatians, verse 16, he says this. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. And Paul even continues, St. Paul continues in his letter to the Ephesians on the same topic. This was obviously something that was very dear to St. Paul, something that he'd seen being twisted and distorted. That we see being twisted and distorted today by the Roman Catholic Church in the teachings of works of the law. In St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians in chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, he says, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man shall boast. So folks, we can see here three separate letters to three separate groups. St. Paul is talking about confirming the fact that we are to display faith in Christ. And it is by faith in Christ that we are justified, not by works. For God is pleased by faith. Jesus Christ finished the work on the cross. Jesus Christ paid the price on Calvary's cross. We all know, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, that Jesus Christ died and was buried, and on the third day rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. Folks, we know this to be true. We know that he was witnessed by over 500 people having risen from the dead, having completed all of the work necessary by the Father. All of the work necessary, Jesus Christ completed it. Peter said, Peter said, So that those who have faith in Christ can be justified by that faith and not justified by works. See, even Abraham himself, Abraham was justified by faith. It was credited to him by righteousness. I'm a Roman, I was born in Roman Catholic, raised Roman Catholic, spent 20 years in the longest Catholic year. We do that, that's right. Communion. Communion. But you see, it doesn't actually become the blood and body of Jesus. It's symbolic. He's talking about, he's talking about justification. He works. No, I'm talking about that. That's a good point. Folks, the Gospel of St. James is something that the Catholic Church often uses to say, no, we do need works in order to be saved. But that's not what St. James is saying, folks. What St. James is addressing here, he's addressing those that claim that they are saved by their works. When in actual fact, 
So James is talking about being justified by men for their works, not justified by God. Because justification in the eyes of God is achieved through faith. St. James says that we should be showing the result of being transformed by the Holy Ghost, of being transformed by the Spirit of God into a new creature in Christ. Through faith in Jesus Christ, that He makes us a new creature, as Paul says, Behold, old things are passed away, all things become new. Folks, when we become new creatures in Christ, we will display the evidence of being a new creation in Christ by works. So yes, works are a part of the Christian walk, but works are evidence that we have faith in Christ and we've been saved. Works are not something we use to earn our salvation. There is nothing that we can add to the precious blood of Jesus Christ shed on Calvary's cross. For if there's something that we could add to the cross of Christ, there will be no need for Christ to have died in the first place. But Christ, the perfect spotless Lamb of God, is the only one who was able to offer up Himself as a perfect sacrifice, the Lamb of God, spotless, without blemish. None of us can claim to be able to do that. We all know that the Bible says, for there is none righteous, not one. The one who was righteous, the one who is righteous, and the one who always will be righteous is Jesus Christ. And He was the one that finished the work on Calvary's cross. By which we are saved, folks. Folks, we see a great calamity happening in the Philippines and our hearts go out to those who have been affected by the tragedy in the Philippines. But listen to what one of the Catholic priests said when somebody says, why does God allow these things to happen? The Catholic priest didn't know. He didn't have an answer. He couldn't say. He said it wasn't God, it was Mother Nature. First of all, nature is not our mother. And secondly, nothing goes unnoticed by God. The truth is, all men everywhere must be born again. Jesus said you must be born again. For those that died in the Philippines without the knowledge of Christ, without the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, it'll be a tragic day. For we know that the Bible says it is appointed for a man once to die and after this the judgment. We know that at the end of most, most Catholic Masses there are prayers for the deceased. There are anniversary prayers for those who died a year ago. Folks, the Bible says that it's appointed for a man once to die. Straight after this, folks, immediately comes the judgment of God. And the judgment of God it is at that point God will judge you. that our faith you is just decided. Get out of here. I'll get it the is police. at that I'm <laughs> gonna get the police on you. This is not at, 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 at that point of death is the point where we God know that judges. we know everything. You don't know anything. This lady declares anything. that I don't know anything, folks. I spent twenty years in the Catholic Church. Oh we have we'll get out of here then. But I'm here because I'm concerned about the deceptions taught. You don't have to be concerned about that. I'm just I'm, I'm concerned about the effect it's had on dear ladies like this lady here who hates the preaching of the truth. Folks, this is the fruits of the Catholic Church and it grieves me to the core.